Hey there witches, Tiffany and Yokai here with another episode of Bewitching the Muse. Today we're going to show you how to create your own ammonia jar. Oh, he wants down. Okay. <laughs> Now, ammonia jars are actually a hoodoo practice, and they are used to reverse any situations that aren't working in your favor. If this seems like the type of video that you are interested in seeing more of, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below, and also hit the little bell icon that pops up, because that's going to give you notifications when I come out with new videos. So these are great for if you have a lot of competition vying for a promotion, and maybe other people are looking at being looked at more favorably than you, court cases, and even health issues. Now, of course, just as a disclaimer, I never encourage anyone to just seek out spell work and magic when it comes to health issues. Of course, speak with an actual doctor, an actual professional, but these can definitely help. These are basically good for any situation where you are running into a lot of obstacles, when things just aren't going your way. For example, this year, 2020 with the pandemic going on i was out of work for three months then i was back at work for a month and then i was off work again i applied for unemployment at the very beginning of it and i've just hit obstacle after obstacle after obstacle and four months after filing my claim still had not received a single payment there were so many different factors involved in my claim and trying to sort things out with the edd where it just was not going my way so i made an ammonia jar and it literally worked the next day. Now, I don't wanna get anybody's hopes up because in general, you wanna give them about two weeks to work. Now, that's the average time, keep that in mind, but typically you wanna give these things about three months and if by the end of that three months, it's still not working, maybe it's time to do something else. But ammonia jars are extremely powerful magic. It's best to do these on a new moon because of course, new moons, oh, my little, my new little moon tapestry here. New moons symbolize new beginnings. However, it's not a requirement and you can really do this at any time that you need it. All you're going to need is a jar, a piece of paper, a pen, and some tape or glue. And then of course you want some ammonia. Or if you're like me and you're not grossed out easily, you can also use some of your own urine. I'll go over the details of that in a moment. Optional items that you can also use to kind of add a little booster to it are of course crystals that correspond with whatever you are going after or a candle. I like to use a single white candle, just keep it nice and neutral. And those two items, if you use either one of them, do not put them in the jar. So the first thing you're going to do is take your piece of paper and you want to measure it so it fits inside of the jar. You want it to curl around the inside edge, touching it because you are going to tape or glue it down. I forgot to prep a piece of paper beforehand. So this is just a piece of newspaper that I had nearby. So it will go into the jar like so. It doesn't wrap all the way around. You can have it closer together than that. You just don't want it overlapping. So with that piece of paper, what you're going to write on it is your current situation as it is. So I know we tend to get hung up in keeping things positive and writing the things that you want as if they're already happened, as if they already have happened. Grammar, malfunction. So we do that in sigils and petitions. I know that's what we're all used to. This is a little bit different because you're going to write down the situation as is that way that exact situation is what is getting reversed, which will make more sense once we get to the actual action of the ammonia jar in a couple minutes. Be very specific. Every single obstacle that's in your way, write it down. My issues with the EDD and my unemployment claim, I wrote down, I am unable to get through on the telephones. I have not received any correspondence in the mail. I am unable to log in to my online account. I have not been paid and my local government representatives have not been able to help me. I added a few other things in there, but I just wanted to give you a quick example. Maybe you're vying for a promotion, but your competition is sucking up to your boss hardcore, so they're, you know, kind of eyeballing them instead. Write down, you know, boss's name does not notice my accomplishments. Coworker's name is taking responsibility for the work that I've done, you know, whatever it is to your specific situation. If there's only one thing that you have to write down, that's okay. But if it's a big like cluster f of issues, then write as many details down as possible that you can fit on that piece of paper. After you do that, that's when you take the piece of paper and you put it inside of your jar. And you wanna make sure that the words you wrote down are inside the jar. You don't want them facing outward 
if it bleeds through the paper and you can see it out here, that's fine. But the writing where you actually wrote it down should go inside. And then you can glue it in place if you want. I think tape is a lot more convenient and it's easier to get it in the position I want it and then tape it from the the edges here. I don't know if you can see that because of the glare, along the edges, that's, that's what I do. After that, you're going to fill that jar up with ammonia. Now you can just go to Smart and Final or Amazon or whatever and order a bottle of ammonia. That's gonna work great and classically, that's the way it's done. Make sure you don't fill it up all the way. You wanna leave a little space but here's the thing, we are eventually going to be flipping the jar over and you wanna make sure that all of your words are covered. So depending on how much you write, how big your piece of paper is, fill it up like 80, 90% of the way. And earlier I mentioned using urine. Now, this is not traditionally used for ammonia jars. It is used in things like witches bottles, but ammonia jars, I don't think I've ever come across anybody else's video or blog post or in a book that anybody else has used urine for an ammonia jar, although I wouldn't be surprised. Here's why I choose to use urine. One, it's already got ammonia in it. Now I drink crazy amounts of water throughout the day. So most of my pee is pretty diluted. So if I'm going to do this, it is the first time I use the restroom in the morning. I'm sorry if I'm getting gross and very TMI about this. I'm just trying to be specific and clear to help you guys out. So I really hope that's okay. <laughs> but your urine first thing in the morning when you get up is going to have the most ammonia content in it because you haven't had anything to drink in several hours. So that is the PDUs. But that said, the other reasons I use urine. Number two is because it is a tag lock. It belongs to me. Therefore, I'm really, really personalizing this. And number three, I like what urine symbolizes here. When I think of urine being used as a tool, I think about animals using it to mark their territory. Well, you know what? So many things in whatever event this is or issues th these are have been out of my control. Well, you know what? No, I peed on them. They're mine now. I am staking my claim. It is mine. So that's my personal reasons for that. I know it's a little gross, but I mean, it's my pee, so whatever. So you either put ammonia in it or you pee in it. The choice is up to you. After that, all you have to do is seal it up and please, please, please be careful about what jar you pick out. You want to make sure it is absolutely liquid and airtight. If you have a jar like this and maybe that rubber seal isn't lined up properly or it's a little bit old and dried out, no, you don't wanna use that because you don't want ammonia spilling everywhere and you definitely don't want pee spilling everywhere. Before you even use it for the spell, I would recommend that you test it out with water first. Okay, so you've sealed it up, it's good to go. Now, what you're going to do, focus on the situation as it is. And as you slowly flip the jar over, you are going to visualize that whole situation reversing in your favor. You are literally physically reversing everything that's going on on this paper here. And you're also going to visualize it in your mind. Think about what each of these things would look like if they were flipped around in order to benefit you. And then that's it, you can stop there. That is good enough for most people. What I like to do after that point is I like to burn a candle on top of it. Like I said earlier, just a white candle, nothing fancy. I might like anoint it or carve a rune into it, but only if the situation really, really desperately needs that extra power. But like I said, it's not necessary. The whole candle isn't even necessary. Or you could put a crystal on top. But either way, what you're going to do is just set it up out of the way somewhere and let it sit. The only thing that I would recommend is you are careful about what temperature you're leaving it in. If you're using the ammonia, you are working with chemicals. If you're using the pee, you don't want that getting hot. <laughs> and then on top of that, if you're using something with a rubber seal like this, or just in general, you're working with glass, you don't want it to be in extreme temperatures one way or the other. So just keep that in mind with where you place it. Otherwise, I mean, you don't have to hide it. You don't have to bury it. It, you just set it aside and that's it. Wait three months, see what happens. Now, once you get all of your desired results, just dump everything out. 
throw away the paper, clean the jar. You can always reuse the jar. Just like physically like scrub it with soap and then, you know, smoke cleanse or sound cleanse it. And you can use it again for something else. Now, you might sit down to do this and go, whoa, whoa. that was way too simple. That was way too easy. And I know it seems like one of those, it's too good to be true spells, but it works. I have had it work. Sometimes, like I said, that last one, it took me one day. Other times it has taken me a couple months. But in my personal experience, I have never had one that didn't work. Sometimes it didn't work the way I necessarily expected it to, but I mean, that's all magic, right? If you're a witch, it's gonna happen from time to time. And there's really no need to overcomplicate this. You can use any kind of clear jar that you want. You can use something, a leftover jam jar that you cleaned out. Either one will work. You don't have to use the candle. You don't have to use the crystal and no fancy paper. Traditionally, you want to use parchment paper, but even that is not necessary. I've done it with notebook paper. That is how incredibly simple and powerful the spell is. We tend to get hung up in the details and sure, some spell work, you do need to be very meticulous with what you use but not in this one. All right, witches, make sure to hit that thumbs up if you wanna see more spell videos. If you have any, any, any questions about this one whatsoever, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you all, so please shoot me an email, follow me on Instagram, send me a message on Instagram, share a meme from Instagram. New videos are always released Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so like I said earlier, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like this one and ding the little bell so you get notifications. Best of luck with your ammonia jar adventures. Let me know how they go. I'll talk to you all soon.